Thank you.
Well, welcome this morning to our online service. If this is the first time you've joined us, welcome to the family. It's good to have you join us as we share in some scripture, some song, some learning and some interaction with each other over the next short period of time. Uh, today is a special service. You can see from behind me uh, that uh, today is the beginning of Holy Week as we lead up to the events of Easter. And at the beginning of this week, we call this Palm Sunday, and that'll make more sense as we go along. So welcome. Today's service is, uh, as you'll see, a collaboration and more people involved. So see if you can spot uh, people who you know uh, who have been involved in the service today. But let's begin as we have been with a psalm. I'm going to read to you Psalm 118. And although this was written for a different time and occasion, it does relate to not only Palm Sunday, but also to where we find ourselves today. So let me begin. Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, his love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his love endures forever. When hard pressed, I cried to the Lord. He brought me into a spacious place. The Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. What can human beings do to me? The Lord is with me. He is my helper. I look in triumph on my enemies. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in human beings. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. All the nations surrounded me, but in the name of the Lord, I cut them down. They surrounded me on every side, but in the name of the Lord, I cut them down. They swarmed around me like bees, but they were consumed as quickly as burning thorns. In the name of the Lord, I cut them down. I was pushed back and about to fall, but the Lord, he helped me. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. So this morning, as we celebrate that and hold on to that hope, welcome as we move into today. Last week, we had the opportunity to give thanks for some of the things that were on our hearts. And as you can do today, if you're engaging with us live, you can share those things on the chat so that we can be thankful together. Last week, we were thankful for those who have income still where many don't for a safe home to isolate in, for food and water, for our church family, for our other family. We're thankful for laughter, thankful for health, for great leaders. So many things you can see there that we were thankful for and we continue to be. God is good and faithful. So let's pray and lift those things up and be thankful to him today as you continue to share those things. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are good and faithful. We thank you that you haven't changed. We thank you for our beautiful world, for sunshine and rain, for changing seasons. We thank you for family, for support and for ways to connect with each other like this, even in this present time. Lord, there is so much to thank you for, for who you are and for what you have done. So we continue to give thanks for the things that we are sharing today. And in a moment of silence in our own time, we give thanks for the things that we are seeing listed and for the other things in our hearts. Let's give thanks. We thank you, God. And as we do, we acknowledge that we fail. We confess our sins. We confess that we're fickle people who quickly turn away, that we're quick to flock to you when all is well, but we're prone to scatter when there's opposition or criticism. Too often we have kept silent before you, afraid to proclaim your praise. We find it easy to join the crowd as you triumphantly ride into Jerusalem, singing our joys and our expectations, dancing our hopes and dreams. But we find it hard, far more difficult to stand by you as the crowd cries for your crucifixion. So forgive us. Forgive our weaknesses when we turn away. And strengthen us for the journey ahead as we relive your suffering and death. 
that we might stay beside you to the end, as you do for us. Give us the courage to shout our hosannas, not only today, but each and every day. Amen. Well, while many things change and continue to change, the life of the church continues in many ways. So I will now hand you over to a few notices to keep you informed with the life of our church over the week and the weeks to come. Next weekend, please join us for two special Easter services. On Good Friday, tune to 88.9 FM Hills Radio or hillsradio.com.au at 9am as we walk through the Easter story readings and songs. On Easter Sunday, join us here for online church at 10am. Don't forget that you can support the work of the Uniting World through the Lent event. Pick up an envelope from the mailbox outside of Wandine or donate directly at lentevent.com this week. Thank you for those who have set up regular electronics giving for, for your tithes and offerings. You can find our account details by clicking on the donate button or on our church website. Hi families, I'm glad that you can join us for another online service. This week is Palm Sunday. So for the kids, we have a uh, exciting new online lesson that they can access. In this lesson, we have some videos to watch, activities to do, as well as some coloring sheets. I'll also be dropping off um, activity packs for our regular kids that they can do during the week. Uh, some of the activities in here relate to Palm Sunday and some of them are connected to Easter. But um, as we'll be learning, this is all a part of God's big story. Um, so uh, one of the activities that we've got is a Lego challenge. and. This is where I'm asking the families to recreate each scene from the Easter story. Uh, if you're not sure what these are, just look at the colouring pages at the bottom of the page and they're numbered one to seven. And these are each a part of the Easter story that we want to recreate using Lego. Don't worry if you don't have any Lego at home. You can use um, any craft that you've got around home or you can just colour in the sheets and send in a picture of them. So that is um, once you've created these scenes, either colouring it in or with your Lego, it would be great if you could take a photo or a short um, 10 to 20 second video of it and send it in to Matt and that way he can put the story together for next week. So um, I hope this all goes well. I'm pretty new to uh, this technology and online communication as, as everyone is, but I think we'll just keep getting better at it as we go. All right, bye for now. Well, here we are in this beautiful month of April and it's the first Sunday and it's birthday day. And we've got a veritable galaxy of uh, wonderful people on the birthday list. So first of all, it's Jill. Now, Jill had a really significant birthday uh, on fr uh, Friday. I think it's Friday. Special day, Jill. Congratulations. And Glenda, I think you've got a special wedding anniversary coming up sometime pretty soon. And then we've got Bron and Glenn and Darren, all of them pillars of the outfit. Happy birthday to you lot. And John... I hope this year you're able to get out and push a blade. Caitlin, Caitlin, I'm saving those milk bottle tops for you, Caitlin. We got them. And to Brian, well, we just love that keyboard, Brian. And Judy, Judy, we miss the flute. We really do. Young Ezra, Ezra, enjoy your 11th birthday, young fella. And finally, rounding out the month is Brett on the 27th and if I've missed anybody we'll have a happy birthday and so it's back to you Matt the rest of the service. I'm here around the Chunga and uh, noticed a few friendly faces you might have seen as you drive past. And I've got their owner here, uh, Chris. How are you Chris? Good thanks. 
Chris, uh, can you tell us their names? Yes, the white one is Napoleon and the brown one is Antoinette. Napoleon and Antoinette. And tell us, how did you come to own, own some donkeys? Uh, uh, we rescued them. Rescued? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, what kind, what's their temperament? What kind of an animal are they? Well, we don't really know, <laughs> to be honest. Left Obviously memorable, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, uh, one last question. Mm -hmm. um, if you were to recommend a mode of transport for royalty or a celebrity, would a donkey be your recommendation? Definitely not. <laughs> Today's reading is from Mark chapter 11, verses 1 to 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Sing with us now. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, we lift up your name. Good morning everyone. Welcome to um, this time of our prayers for others as we share together online in our worship of our Heavenly Father on this Palm Sunday. So Matt asked me if I would share this time. Uh, I don't know if that's perhaps because soon after this pandemic started, uh, three and a half weeks ago, I was prompted to write to our Prime Minister telling him that I and others in our Uniting Church, as I know you were, were praying for him and his colleagues. I thanked him for his wise and compassionate leaders, leadership of our nation at this uncertain time in our world's history and assured him of our prayers. I was surprised a couple of days later to receive a reply. And for those who are in our Facebook um, church community, I shared that with them. Uh, the Prime Minister wrote, Dear Mrs Trim, thank you for your kind message and for letting me know you are praying for me. After being a husband and a father, being Prime Minister of Australia is the great privilege of my life. I'm mindful it's about service to the Australian people. It's encouraging to know that Australians like you are praying for me. We all need prayer. 
prime ministers as much as, pos as anyone else. Your thoughts and encouragements are deeply appreciated. Yours sincerely, Scott Morrison. So since then, for um, 21 days, the Lord's been waking me in the night and in the early mornings and um, reminding me that he who we know today on this Palm Sunday as Christ, our servant King, has been asking me and us to follow him and bring um, prayers for those who are serving our community at this time of this pandemic and those who are needing to be served. Just a small part that we can play as the church. Early on, he gave me this song in my head, now is the time for the church to arise and proclaim him, Jesus, Saviour, Redeemer and Lord. So for, uh, for these 21 days, we've been um, taking things one day at a time and they've been... Um, between one and 10 or 11 people who have acknowledged uh, that they have joined me in these prayers. And so we know that Lord Jesus said, where two of you agree in prayer, John 14, 14, uh, if you ask anything in my name, I'll do it, that the Father might be glorified in the Son. And so it's with that confidence that we've brought before him um, some different part members of our community, nurses, our research scientists, those who are anxious and shut in, those who are cleaning and sanitising places. Um, we've prayed for the children and the teachers, those working on the supply chain, those who've lost their jobs, supermarket checkout operators, the police and others. So I uh, asked and managed to get in contact with uh, some of our those others in our community today who I know are not on Facebook, if they have any prayer requests for us today. I'll start with um, the two that Matthew's asked us to pray for, and they are that we would pray for the Mount Barker Hospital as the management and the staff there deal with changes and preparation for any increase in the outbreaks. And he had received a um, letter from the regional manager of schools ministry group who had been observing that in schools, many staff are anxious, very anxious and stressed and unsure about their own health and facing less than ideal situations some students are because school is sometimes, for some children, a safer place than their home. So we'll be remembering we uphold those to the Father today too. Um, so I'm just going to bring you some of the prayers that those who've got back to me have uh, asked for. Helen, Helen has said, can we thank the Lord for his loving arms around us in these sad and trying times and for those with cancer and pain? Glenda Samuel has asked that we pray for all medical staff this morning both on the front line, supermarket staff, school teachers, and those who are already infected with coronavirus and for a speedy recovery to our so-called normal, healthy community. Felicity and Darren have asked that we, for everyone to stay safe, especially the emergency services, hospital staff, doctors, nurses, SAAS workers, SAPOL, the fire service and the SES business and workers that are losing their jobs, that the elderly stay safe, for schools, for the direction and what path they should take moving forward. That was from Felicity and Darren. Jill and Peter Clark have asked that we pray for our leaders and all the people who are ill, for lonely people who are not coping with this situation. Julie Raymond, finally. Could we please pray for all those who've lost their jobs? Also for people grieving the death of loved ones this week who aren't able to have extended family and friends at the funeral to grieve with them and provide comfort. And so as we join together now in prayer, let's just take a moment or two to be silent before our Father.
We thank you for your presence with us, Holy Spirit. We are a moment and he is forever. You know, John chapter 14 is a wonderfully encouraging chapter at this time. Yes, on Friday we prayed for those who are homeless. Listen to this wonderful promise from Jesus. If a man loves me, he'll keep my word and my father will love him. And we will come to him and make our home with him. Let's pray. So, Father, you've heard all these prayer requests that have been brought to you by folk in our Achangi Uniting. In the last few days and in the days since this pandemic began. Dear Father, we thank you so much that you are already answering many of those prayers. Father, we ask that you keep us faithful to interceding on behalf of others, those who are serving us so faithfully, Father, and those who need to be served at this time. We trust you, Lord, for faithfulness is most, one of the most beautiful qualities you have. Dear Father, we thank you that you cannot deny yourself. You will and do hear our prayers and answer them in your own good and glorious way and in your own good and glorious time. And so we lift these, all these who we've mentioned before you this morning, Father. We rest in you with them. We commend them into your tender, loving arms, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're moving across this world. We also want to ask that at this time your church will arise. Strengthen us, Lord, this morning. Strengthen each who have tuned in to this service. Fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit, that we would be bearers of the good news, Lord Jesus, that you came. That we would be those who help bring your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. Father, thank you that you're the Lord of history. It's your story. And we trust you that you would Bring us through this pandemic, Father. Thank you for all those who are working that there might be a way through, especially, Lord. Thank you for those who are working on a vaccine. Thank you for the breakthroughs they've already had. And now, dear Father, in this moment of silence, we remember by name those who were specifically and specifically concerned about today. Thank you for holding them, Father. For those who don't know you, Lord Jesus, let this be a time when anxious hearts cry out to you in prayer. Let this be a time, Lord, when your spirit moves upon them bringing them dreams and visions of you, Lord Jesus, recalling to mind things they heard in Sunday schools perhaps a, a long time ago, words of comfort, words of promise. Holy Spirit, we thank you that this would be a time we know the harvest is always plentiful. And we ask, Father, that you continue to send us out into the harvest that others at this time would know Jesus is Lord. Jesus is our servant King. He is interceding at the right hand of our Father for each one of us now. We pray these things in and through his precious name. Amen.
Reading from Mark, chapter 14, verses 3 to 9. While he was in Bethany, reclining at the table in the home of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. Some of those present were saying indignantly to one another, Why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages and the money given to the poor. They rebuked her harshly. Leave her alone, said Jesus. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you and you can help them any time you want, but you will not always have me. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. This is the word of the Lord. Well, two passages from Mark today of some distance apart. As we continue to read through the Gospel of Mark, exploring Mark as we've done so since Christmas and in the lead up to the events of next Sunday, the events of Easter. The first reading today was from Mark 11 and that we're rewinding the story a little bit. All of the things that we've talked about in recent weeks have come since that moment. The things, the clearing of the temple, the, the fig tree, Jesus' authority being questioned, the parables, the greatest commandment, the widow's offering, and his warnings about the future. All those things have happened between Mark 11 and our second reading today, which was from Mark 14. And all of these events happen between now, Sunday, and Thursday, when we traditionally focus on the Last Supper and Jesus' arrest, going into his crucifixion and, of course, his rising from the dead. But let's not go too far ahead of us. So we go back to Mark 11. And Mark, in this story, doesn't give us all the details that we find in Matthew and other places. Mark doesn't mention that the branches are palm branches or that the colt was a donkey. He leaves out those de details. Mark doesn't make a big deal about the, the humble kind of animal that this donkey colt was. In contrast to the way a, a king would be expected to enter. We could make a big deal of those things, but that's not Mark's focus. But they are worth noting. Jesus' entrance said something as he rode on this humble animal. For Mark, though, this is all about God's coming kingdom. It's been his message throughout. It's been Jesus' message. Jesus had just made a long and hard climb from, from Jericho. Now, Jericho is, in fact, the lowest city on earth, 800 feet below sea level. And the climb that Jesus had just made is from Jericho right to Jerusalem up in the hills. It's not really that far as the crow flies or if you look on a map. But Jerusalem is nearly 3,000 feet above sea level. So we're nearly 4,000 feet in distance they've traveled. And let's remember they're not traveling in air-conditioned comfort. These men, they're on foot. And they're traveling across dry and dusty country until they arrive at the top of the Mount of Olives. When not only here they have a view of Jerusalem, but the first real vegetation they would have come across for miles. Even if you were someone who walked this journey regularly, you would, as you got to the top of this mountain, have this sense of exhilaration at reaching your top. That sense that you climb climbing any mountain and the outlook would have been amazing. Now for Jesus and his followers, they were now entering Jerusalem at festival time the Passover, and they were doing that with crowds from uh, all others who had come down from the north. 
This was something that they do a pilgrimage several times a year to Jerusalem. Because let's remember, Jerusalem and the temple that was a part of was their center of Jewish worship. It was the center of their Jewish life. They believed and understood God had chosen to place his name and his presence there. And through the regular daily sacrifices that took part in the temple, that they would be forgiven of their sins. That they'd be united with God. And they were offered this hope for the future. So in they come. And this Passover festival was starting to to get into swing. A festival that reminded them of their own deliverance from Egypt. It was a reminder of the freedom and who had brought that freedom about. And so the city would have been buzzing with conversation, with singing, with prayer, with dancing and fasting. This was the scene as they not only come over this hill, but as they enter Jerusalem. Celebration. The great hope and freedom that these had now hoped for. Mark's telling us they now it was being revealed. God's saving presence celebrated in Passover is now here. As Tom Wright puts it, the long climb up through the Judean wilderness was the climb to the kingdom. And to back that up, how does Jesus enter? Well, he enters as a king would. Despite the humble donkey, the people spread their cloaks on the dusty road. They wave branches. Why? It's a sign of royalty, something that they'd done 200 years ago when Judas Maccabeus had defeated the Syrians. They shouted praise, they lifted their names, and they shouted the word Hosanna. Now, earlier in the service, we read from Psalm 118, but that wasn't the the whole of the psalm. Let me read you the rest. Psalm 118, starting now at verse 15. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. I will not die, but live and will proclaim what the Lord has done. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvellous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice and be glad. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. For the house of the Lord will bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine on us. While bows in hand, join in the feastal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. This psalm's important because it is the one place that the word that they shouted is found in Scripture. It wasn't written as it here, but in verse 25 of Psalm 118, where it says, Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. That is the word Hosanna. Hosanna. It's an English word spelling of a Greek word, which was the spelling of a Hebrew word. And it means save us. And it became a shout of praise for the people. A shout of hope. A shout of thanks that God had saved them and would save them. A shout of hope. So this cry of help became an expression of praise. This confidence in the God who had, would 
will save them. Perhaps this expression is the perfect phrase, the perfect expression for the time we now find ourselves in. I know many of you, as I've chatted to you this week, and many people around are fearful. There's a sense of unknown and anxiety. We look at the news, and maybe we shouldn't, as we see so many things going on that concern us. We have so many questions. There are so many unknowns. There is good, yes, and we have hope, and we know the good things, but we certainly can't do this on our own. And so we cry to God, save us. God, help us. We cannot do this on our own. We need it. But out of our desperation, that same word can also be an expression of faith, of trust, of hope. We can sing to God, Hosanna, save us, in a, in a way of praise. God, you have saved us and we are thankful. We can make it uh, not just a cry for help, but an expression of trust that God has this in hand. That ultimately he has saved us. Through his work on the cross, those who believe in Jesus are saved. Whatever happens around us or to us, we don't need to be afraid of death or where we are going. We can have confidence in and say, Hosanna, God, you are our saviour. You have saved us. We can cry that in, in the more immediate sense too. To say, God, I trust in you. I don't understand and I don't know where this is going. I don't know if I'm going to be all right, but I trust you. Hosanna, you are our saviour. You came to save us. You are with us and I have full confidence in that. Perhaps Hosanna is the perfect word and expression for us in this time. It puts our trust where our trust is needed. Because God is ultimately still on his throne. Jesus is still Lord. He hasn't changed. He is still right with us. As the footprints poem says, when we, uh, there's only one set of footprints, it's because he's carrying us. It's a beautiful picture. God is with us. And we acknowledge the desperate times and the, the concern and the fears. But we also acknowledge the one who is and is to come. Our Saviour. We move to our second reading and just briefly. This is uh, chapter 14, the real beginning of the events of Easter. Up to this point, we've learned who Jesus is. We've been in Jerusalem. There's lots that's happened around the temple, but now it really comes home that the events of the coming days are serious. That this Savior, that this King who was celebrated, who was uh, with palm branches and cloaks, who they shouted Hosanna to, was soon to die and to give his life. This woman, at the risk of, of, of looking foolish, at the risk of, of being told that she was wasteful, anoints Jesus. She pours out what was expensive and considered to be, uh, to be special on him. And despite criticism, Jesus says, no, this needs to happen. This woman gave everything. This woman gave her all and is an act of worship. So how will you respond over this time? Do people look to you and see something in you as, as the world falls in around us? And perhaps in your own circumstances, there are so many other things that others would look at and go, how do you cope? Are you still able to give your all, as this woman did, to uh, give it where it's due as an act of worship? Because we know that God is good. We know he is faithful. 
But how do we respond? Do we just respond in the moment when the crowd, when all is looking good? Or do we respond when life is hard and when there is great cost? How will you respond in these times? Where are your eyes fixed? I pray that each of us would take the things that we know and that they would go sinking deep into our hearts. That the firm foundation we have of trusting in Jesus, the stories we've just read as we've travelled through Mark, are a firm foundation. That we know that Jesus has great authority to calm the storms, to heal the sick, authority over demons we need not be afraid, and even over death. He's got this. Hosanna. May this be our prayer. May this be the way we live this week. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are good. We thank you for the life of Jesus that teaches us so much and that his presence is still with us. A presence that is saving. A presence that is with us through the storms. Such richness that we've learned as we've read through the good news over the last few months. God, in our present time, we acknowledge our fears and insecurities. We know that you are good and powerful and all-knowing and that you are still on your throne. So we cry, save us, but in doing so, we pray that you'd help us to trust you. And that that would be a cry of thanks, knowing that you have and you will save us. Help us to put our trust in you more and more today than we ever have before. And as we come into this week ahead, we pray that you would move us. We pray that you would shape us. That the impact of what you have done for us would set us free to live life in its fullness. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. May the songs that uh, we've sung today be stuck in your head and may Hosanna be your cry this week. As we go today, I'm going to leave you with a blessing from the book of Numbers yet again. So may the Lord bless you and keep you this week. The more Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. God is with you as you live in hope. Stay connected. Dig deeper. <laughs>